and we just thank you for joining us. We see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Beauty on the Bayou's podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about professional hair in the workplace. Um, t- we're going to cover color, style, um, lengths, cuts, any and everything. Everything is open, open-minded, open uh, dis- discussion. So Should we start with an with example of the situation? Um, okay. Okay, so if a person applies to a job, what is an appropriate hairstyle? <laughs> okay, um, recently we had a customer that came in and um, their hair is not a natural color. Uh, when, when people refer to natural colors, they are talking about colors that you could have been born with. That's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. If you were not born, if you can't see yourself being born with blue hair, then that's not an acceptable color. Hold on, hold on. Excuse us, y'all. We have, we have our kids, y'all. And we love them. We want them to keep it down. You know, y'all know how it is. <laughs> All right. So. Paige! <laughs> you the only one talking, hush! Paige, shut up for real. Shut up! <laughs> I'm sorry. We need You're being staff. punk. Believe it. Oh. Yeah, we, we need to stay up to open up y'all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Settle down and get comfortable yeah. with the screen. Okay, um, let's, let's rewind. Okay. Welcome to Beauty on the Bayou. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about professional hair in a professional setting. Uh, I, mean, sure. well, we didn't I know that's why. That's why. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I am so sorry, <laughs> you guys. Giggle, this is our first time doing a live podcast. Please bear with us. Uh, we're gonna rewind. Okay. Oh. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Beauty on the Body. Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about professional hair in a professional setting, work, church, whatever. Um, today we have I'm Asia, the host, and I'm Brianna, the hair arranger. I'm Dwana McKee, with the stylist and owner. I'm Lizzie, the great whisperer, and I'm Mia, yes. our special guest. Yes, our special mm-hmm. guest, Mia. Um, we can all be found at Beauty on the Bayou as far as Facebook, Instagram, and things like that. Mia, would you like to care to, to share how to how to fo- follow you? Oh, follow me at Mia M Robinson on Facebook and M N M M L on in Instagram. And I'm Das Lovely underscore boutique on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Das being B A Z. I am Lizzie Fat on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm the Brave Whisper on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, so we're gonna start off with um the reason why we decided to do this podcast. Um, uh, one of our clients came in and um her hair is two toned. And it's not a natural color. And uh, she worked for this company once before with this same hair color. They hired her with that same hair color. Um, she um, had to leave for a little while, and now she has returned. They're offering her job back, but they're telling her that um, some rules have changed with their uniform. And she's like, well, what colors are we wearing as far as the uniform goes and they were like no uh it's a little bit a little depth than that it's it's hair color uh your hair has to be a natural color um for those of you that don't know what a natural color is i think a natural color in a nutshell is uh hair colors that you are actually born with uh, we're not born with pink hair, we're not born with blue hair, purple, green, bright reds, oranges, you know, things like that. 
Uh, so we're just going to follow suit in there. It's just going to be an open discussion. Um, I do have a few questions from some of our followers that, um, that we're going to uh, get to. So our topic today is professional hair in a professional setting. And we're going to cover uh, color, cuts, lengths, styles. styles, everything. And also right. let us know what y'all think on Periscope. Yes. Yeah, let us know what you think on Periscope. We're new to this and we want you to swipe to the left, right, up, down, whatever you need to do to share it with other people mm -hmm. and to have other people join us. We welcome that here. But keep in mind that we are professional at our work and our ethics in life and living. So don't get it twisted. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think um, when I go into a, a place of business, especially a restaurant, I don't want to see no nobody's hair flying all over my food. I mean, personally, um, I think the hair should be well groomed to the back, away from plates or foods or anything that, you know, because hair flies. And especially if you wear weaves hair or um, extensions or if basic, if your hair is just naturally long, you know, I think it should be pulled back away from anything that you have to use face for. You know, I, 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 that is because your hair flies. Even if your hair is long and the place is cool, if every place that you go to eat at does not have central air, mostly every place over. Some places that you might go have fans or ceiling fans, the more modern thing that's happening here in New Orleans, that's what we are. You know, they have the ceiling fans, which makes it so jazzy and comfortable. You know, your hair is going to fly. If your hair is all over, the hair is going to touch your food. I think that's very unprofessional. I think that the owner should um, help think according to, you know, the um, atmosphere of the restaurant of how it should be right. attended to. And in the restaurant industry, that's standard for right. uh, hair to be off the face, mm -hmm. away cool. from a uh, food tucked inside of a hair that actually or a hair foot out. Right. Yeah, that's just that's that's hair standard. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to hair color, I mean, it just depends on the quality of the patient. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter, but I know some uh, fast food chains yeah. are becoming a little more strict. Aware of it. Yeah, yes. um, when it comes to hair color and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, but it just depends on where you work at. But right. it is restaurant standard to have the hair pulled back. At some restaurants, sometimes, well, at your more popular restaurants, yeah, I do see it pulled back and everything. Yeah. So, I also think in the medical field, because you're in close yes. proximity when you're administering medication or if you're in somebody's personal space, you just want to be more conscious of how your hair is right. styled mm -hmm. or more. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you gonna say that? that was yeah, that was my question. Like if you went to your therapist mm -hmm. and you went to see your therapist and your therapist has green hair with shades on the side and maybe some tattoos, would you feel comfortable? You know, and it could be a therapist with all types of degrees and everything. Would you feel comfortable because of the parents? I think it, it's a preference. You know, I think it depends. Um, as I, I knew that we were doing this podcast today, so I pulled my hair up and I put it back as an example. But right now, my locks are pink rolls and the back of my hair is shaved. But if you look at me directly on the camera, I have somewhat of a professional appearance because I have exactly. pulled my locks back. I've wrapped them around. I've condensed them really tight. So mm -hmm. that's not to be offensive in the delivery of whatever information I'm trying to give to whoever I'm trying to give it to. Mm -hmm. So I think if you are challenged by this colored hair or, you know, like you're saying, depending on what um, field mm -hmm. of work you're choosing to be yes. in, there are things that you can do to style your hair exactly. and make it appear in a more professional manner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just all about scaling back, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, wigs, ponytails. I I I feel that um, no matter what length your hair is, as long as you can make a ponytail neat in a bun, whether you have to add hair or not, a sock to, to help the bun. I feel that a bun is is, is good for, mm -hmm. good for any type of job that you that you need. Uh, it's good for interviews as well. Um, 
um, when, when doing interviews for a job, they typically look for someone that is well groomed from head to toe. Especially yeah. your hair. Right, right, right. I mm -hmm. mean, that's the first thing people see. They want to see it right here. They want to look face. in your eyes. They want to see if you're, you know, they, they monitor your eyes. See if you're looking down. You, look up. you know, so if you got your hair like all over, like, oh, man, I can't even see who this is. Who are you, ma'am? You know, so. Nah, and I, I go. I'm going to touch base with what she was saying earlier about the uh, therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, Just for a moment, imagine, you know, your ideal doctor. Would you feel comfortable paying your doctor or your therapist or whoever that's in a professional setting thousands or hundreds of dollars if their hair is just, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, that no one should shave their hair or, or dye it blue. I mean, I love that. That's, that shows create creativity. But what we're talking about is hair in a professional setting and how how you should look in a professional setting so that we you won't have to get told things of oh uh yeah by the way we're gonna hire you back but um your hair has to be toned down it has to be changed or something like that so that's what this podcast is is basically about um Excuse us for just one minute. We have someone just coming in. Say hi. Hey. <laughs> Here are you all as we are family um, as well as business. We do business together. We love together. We live together. And right now we're about to eat together. So, you know, <laughs> y'all just came on in and then she just came back with food and daggers. So, you know, that's where we are right now. <laughs> I don't really know to think that. I don't want y'all to think that, you know, we're just being ghetto, you know, so I have to let y'all know where we at, so, you know, that's so where we I are. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had many clients that came up to me, and let's say either one or the other, they used to have the relaxer, you know, they want to go natural, and they just did the big chop. Then they go to work, and people are like, no. Or the people that's just starting their life journey mm -hmm. and you know how you go through the first stages and everything it's mm -hmm. kind of rough and mm -hmm. people are like no it's unacceptable so oh. that's when you put on a wig i think Maybe. that's what i was going to say you depending put on, on your wig. level of or comfort you camouflage. yeah depending on your level of comfort you may want to use a camouflage like a wig or some type of transition or alternative mm -hmm. you can cover your locks with beginning locks you could wrap them in yarn or you could do double strand twist extensions mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable or if you really want that job now there we do have some clients who they own their hairstyles no matter what it is no matter what color it is how long exactly. how short they own it and wherever they go their hair goes with them right. but some people don't necessarily have that level of confidence mm -hmm. so some people feel like they may need to wear a wig or they need to cover it up and that's fine too, you know, based on your level of comfort yeah, and what it is you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> For natural hair, I'm going to suggest uh, wigs, like Mr. Warner said. I'm also going to suggest uh, ponytails. Ponytails are your friend. Yeah, they may have gone out, uh, so they claim to have gone out, but they still sell them in the store. And you just have to own your style. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, these are our opinions. Yeah, it's our not opinion. facts. These are our opinions. And also, I want to suggest Phil. Um, we are transitioning and going through the first stages of you know locking your hair or growing out your natural hair, cutting your relaxed hair off. I would suggest you know headbands. You yes. know, Headband. you just you just want to polish up your look. You know what I mean? Moisturize it. You know, make it look like you woke up and said, "I I care about my appearance today." Mm -hmm. That's all it is. I mean, you can still have that that funky, you know, edgy. You know, bush. Don't go you know, for a little nappy bush. No nappy dry, lint pillow, sheet bush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Moisturize it. Yes. Yeah, you can still have it down. You can still have it down. You can still have bush, but make, make sure it's just polished. You know, mm -hmm. just make sure it's, it looks just need a little polish. And to give it a little more, um, you could put a small flower. <laughs> yeah, flower. flower. Uh, a little embellishments, you know, right. some, some hair jewelry. Some hair jewelry may not be appropriate mm -hmm. for a, a specific workplace, but you know, there are some. If, it's, if the hair jewelry is bigger than your hand, 
Don't, Don't do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fresh flowers are always a lovely accent for women. Mm. Fresh flowers, not the fake ones, fresh ones. Just a little, little bitty bud right there. It's mm. always beautiful. Yeah. The touch of class. Yeah. And also for dreads, you can also push that back. It might be a little different textures or whatever. We'll push it back, gel, gel your little sides down, put a little ponytail. You know? Mm -hmm. That 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 works. Yeah. Ponytail. Bonds. Bonds. Bonds work. And ponytails work for, for a professional for environment. Yes. Uniformly, like across whatever if it's a hospital field, if it's a medical field, if it's the food industry, pulled back hair, period, generally works. But caution, do not make the ponytails or buns too tight because if you wear it too much and it's too tight, you will ruin your edges. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's it's secure but it's comfortable. Yeah, we right. need our edges. Yeah, it, that 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 is a big mess up is uh colors not matching. You oh, yeah. you you have you have uh black hair with a brown ponytail. Uh, it's that's just not right. It's not right. I mean, but if that's all they have, if that's all you have, just make the ponytail. But yeah. for a professional you know. setting, you do not want to do that because because you in an interview and the interviewer is going to literally be looking at well what is that supposed to be the how is that it? you know but you know sometimes that's considered that i don't think that really plays too much of a big no game. that plays the part colors i'm i'm telling brown you brown and black or I, don't, I, don't, I don't really think so unless i don't think like, so i don't think that would like and make you not get number, a job if anything it would say oh yeah we're going to give her this job so she can match her hair <laughs> oh, well, as a professional stylist, my recommendation is if you really want that job, like if you go into that's your best look. Try to put your best foot forward, as Mia is saying. Yes. And if you can, try to get as close as you can yeah, to right. matching not only the color, but the texture as well. Yes. If you have a straight ponytail, slick your hair down as best as you can. Yeah. But try to get the textures and the colors to right. match it to the best of your ability. Because it is no oh, professional so. setting. That was very noticeable. And sometimes I don't think our sisters know that it's noticeable because they just go to work and they just go. You know, but sisters, y'all need to type. We need to we recognize in everything about each other. We, 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 we're living together. So we want you to represent and, you know, be on your best accord at all times. And also in the workplace, if you did apply for this job in the medical field or a lawyer's office or something like that and your hair is one of those vibrant loud colors um try adding a toner to tone it down um add you can you can have a red but put a darker red on top of it you know just to bring it down some so it won't you know catch their eye and they're like mm -hmm. as soon as they see you this like Oh, your hair. You know what right. I mean? Just, uh, just kind of tone it down some. And then maybe, you know, as you begin to work there and you continue to work there, you can, um, you can ease your way. <laughs> you can ease, you know, okay, a streak here, you know, and then, you know, add some more streaks, add some more highlights. You know, you can ease it in on them uh, if you must have this job and you must have this particular hair color mm -hmm. you know and then if it becomes a problem then you know you have to make a decision you know either i want to pay my bills or i want to keep my hair this color right so you know <laughs> yeah just uh just find ways to scale back you don't have to just eliminate the hair color in in total because there are hair colors that aren't our natural hair colors that are suitable for those places like right the medical field and the, doctor uh the lawyer's office and stuff like that and you want them to see you not mm -hmm. your hair you mm -hmm. want them to notice your aura or your um presence, presence. Mm -hmm. yeah you know you want them to see you you don't want them to see your hair first you know mm -hmm. you want them to see see this vibrant person coming with a smile on your face and like that like we said earlier hey, you, know, you know ask yourself this question do, do i want my uh physician looking like a tattoo artist you right know what I mean? do i want my lawyer looking like you know Amber. so yeah yeah you know someone that i don't want to represent me but you hey, know okay then you, i understand that yeah. but then you go right it goes right back to now the people in high places nowadays are looking are playing that role mm -hmm. are are getting these features to mm -hmm. themselves right so you know 
Well, for me, like I said, I'm gonna take my right. hair down so you guys can see just right. how pink it is. So you really you have see to see how light, how bright and loud mm -hmm. my hair is. But today I had to sell houses. I'm, I'm a real estate agent, so right. in order for me to pass that off, that you know, exactly. I'm a professional, she I just have to, to fun self. wrap my hair. Right. And I camouflage the color. I don't know. That's scaling it. back. But I color. tried. That was my version of scaling back. I didn't get rid of the color, but I just sort of camouflaged it. So right. I would encourage you, though, if this is part of you, it's part of who you are. Like Rihanna was saying, you don't have to get rid of it completely. Just hide. Just you know, <laughs> tone it down, scale mm -hmm. it back, and be fully present to the environment that you're in. Right. You know. Be aware. Be aware. At all times. Another thing that um i've noticed our clients are telling us that um and it's it doesn't it has nothing to do with color or mm -hmm. anything you know out of the way it's mm -hmm. something that we have naturally our natural and our natural curly hair um didn't one of our clients say that uh it was offensive to some people yes some people in the professional work environment and and and, and you know we, we we love caucasians you know we have no problem with it but in this in this particular situation it was uh her boss who i can't really i can't really remember her boss commented on her own natural hair and the texture of it because he was not accustomed to seeing her hair in that way. Mm. So he didn't openly receive I have another hair client mm. that's having the same experience. Mm. She had a curly hairstyle mm. and then she turned it into a straight hairstyle mm. and she was questioned about if the hair was hers and about changing up the hair. But that goes back to me, what I said about owning the hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Whether your hair is 4C, 3A, if it's twisted, if it's straight, if it's curly, you have to own it. Now, if it's the color that grows out of your head, if it is the texture that grows out of your hair and it's as groomed and as professional as you can get it, then you've done your part. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but as Asia was saying earlier, if it's a color that could have grown out of your natural hair color, if the hair is your actual texture, then it is what it is. Right. You know. Any, any more comments about that? Um. It, it, oh. No, I was just was gonna say. So, so he commented in a bad manner, or was it? I'm just asking because I do. I notice. I do change. Like, like y'all know. Y'all see me with the big hair and stuff like that. And it's curly kinky. And then like now today I have this. I kind of like switch up because I'm trying to let my hair, my natural hair, air out from the wigs. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned about, do you think if it's, um, should, do you think that's a factor, a, a real great factor? I think, you know, I, um, I have a little story with my client. She got a promotion and okay. she was going to a different level. Mm -hmm. And her mentor, the one that was already at that level, she was thinking about locking up. And her mentor was like, do not lock up. You even need to wear a wig and work here for a little while and then start your locking process. Her hair was a factor so of her yes. going to the next level. Okay, that's what I needed to know. And I mean, overall, this natural hair movement has become such a phenomenon. Right. But overall, yes. I don't it think people is. are so comfortable. A lot of times, they don't even know their natural hair texture because they've been processing and chemicalizing their hair for so long. And I think that it's a, a term of like self-love, self-esteem, yes. embracing the idea of being in love with what grows naturally mm -hmm. on my head. Yes. And like, this is, I think it just depends on the person and the environment and the situation. Like in that situation, did that woman really want that promotion? Right. Was she willing to wait to lock her hair because she was, you know, at that point? You have to ask yourself that question, and there is no right or wrong answer to it. Mm -hmm. You have to discern where discern right, where right. you are in that process, mm -hmm. in your personal journey. So if you choose to cover it up, lock, not lock, cut it, color it, that's a personal choice. There's not a right or wrong. These are our opinions. This is how we feel about the matter, but mm -hmm. what really matters is how you feel about the matter and where you are on your journey. Mm -hmm. All right. um, moving on to cut. How do y'all feel about cuts? What what are professional cuts versus an unprofessional cuts? 
I would say a non-professional cut would be um a three-way mohawk. Some, <laughs> some. I'm gonna say some mohawk uh, haircuts because mm -hmm. we do have some, you know, that are classy, that are for the workplace, that it, that is for the workplace, and then we have some that's totally not acceptable. Like that's like yeah, a, my opinion. You know, the when you shave the sides, the sides yeah. I mean, completely Please. bald, mm -hmm. and this is something like a bowl cut, mm -hmm. you know. Like your skin, and then there's hair. Right. You know, I, I think that's completely and unappropriate for anybody's hair. workplace. And but there is a, a soft mohawk cut that I think is appropriate for the workplace, depending on you know the hair color, the way it's styled, and everything like that. And even even if you do have a mo mohawk haircut, it can be camouflaged. Mm -hmm. You know, you, if, if your hair is long enough, you can let your hair down. You know, and it can become fine as if it's like a roll wrap or something like that. You know, but that's that's one of the most um, eccentric. Yeah, and, and it's a trending haircut now. You know, yes. hogs are, mm -hmm. are done all kinds of ways, yes, and it's trending. And that's the one that I think that can you know go either way. It can go towards the professional side, and it can go towards you know. The not so professional side. Right. I, what I like, what I like is the what's the cut in the back, the taper. Yes, it's the taper in the back. That has a taper in the back. So once the person has their hair down, you would know, like you see, and you put it up, and it's a little edgy. Right. Right. You know. Right. But you, you can, can camouflage it. it. You can camouflage it if you're a professional. If you're in a professional, you can always camouflage it. And it cuts. With cuts, I I um just say to keep it keep it. Keep it cute. Keep it cute. Keep it um. Just keep it kosher, like you know, keep it, you know. Keep it together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> keep it together. Yeah. Not. Okay. I also feel that um, another thing that's trending is that um, people are shaving half their hair, and yeah. you have the other half with. Mm -hmm. uh, long hair maybe uh short hair but not as short as the side that you have completely uh chopped off uh i've also noticed where they may cut a design into your hair and also get uh eyeliner pencils and color them i think that that's not uh, meant for a professional setting uh maybe on vacation yeah. or something like that and I mean again we're not trying to to cut off anyone's creativity their their personality because yeah. I do feel I that I else. do feel that your hair your makeup the way you wear your clothes the way you walk the way you talk everything all of those things uh create or uh, are as a part of who your character your personality Maybe mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not trying to put anyone down. We're just trying to help when it comes to well, what it. is professional versus not professional? Why would someone in a professional setting have to tell me different things? And this is the reason why is because we had a customer that that uh, had a situation. Closure is very, very important. Oh, I'm an example of a closure. Uh, yeah, my, my hair grew from last week. I, <laughs> I had 22, 28, 18 with a three-part closure. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is the way I'm wearing the part. But yeah, closures, closures work. Uh, there are different types of closure. There's lace, there's, uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's a frontal, a frontal that covers, yeah, covers the, the whole head, mm -hmm. and, and you can uh, part it any way you want. You got that. Well, they use part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Cool. so, I mean, there are a number of ways that you can, uh, and there's also this new thing, the, uh, the illusion, the of, illusion. Uh, the 3D uh, uh, invisible parts. Yeah. That's nice. Yes. Yes. So there's a lot of ways you can wear your hair. Just keep it cool, keep it professional, and keep it covered. And keep it oiled. Mm-hmm. Just talking about all the on your head, make sure you oil your scalp. Yes. With so, the oil of your choice. Mm -hmm. Jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, 
almond oil there are many 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 oils out there that you can choose from depending on yourself avocado and coconut oil tend to be heavier grape seed and jojoba tend to be a little bit on the lighter side so also when you're looking at these oils make sure when you turn it on on the back the ingredients say the actual the first ingredient should be what the oil, the oil is actually uh, supposed to be so if it's a whole oil the first ingredient should be whole whole oil um, and and so far should there be anything else in the in um, oil should not huh sometimes they put fragrance sometimes they mix different preservatives in there okay. so but like the the oil the state of the oil so it doesn't go rancid but right the main thing that you want the first ingredient to be is what it is you're buying okay. Okay. So let us know what y'all think. Um, Periscope. Yes. Periscope is our first time. time. YouTube, it's our first Facebook, Instagram, wherever y'all you think. Wherever you're actually. tuning in to us, please let us know. We will. Um, Give us for, comments. For the, for the panel's sake, we're, we're located at uh, Beauty on the Bayou, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Periscope, uh, all social YouTube, media. All, so, all social media. So, search us by Beauty on the Bayou. Yes. Beauty on the body. Yes. Yeah, make sure you give us uh, give us your feedback. Let, yes. let us know. Uh, and any uh, questions. Yeah, yeah we, questions. We, we love to have questions when, when we're on air. Yes. Sometimes we have questions, sometimes we don't. Uh, if you have any topic that you want us to discuss, please feel free. Beauty on the body. Also, Beauty on the body. If you're, uh, you're interested in being a special guest. Right. Yes. So bringing yes. a special topic to us. We right. welcome others to our space. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we're looking for any hair hairdressers, hair owners, um, hair uh, people that sell hair, uh, fashion, products. whatever products. Yes. Uh, if you any and everything. Yeah. Not anything. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie is right, and not anything. Right, y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. Follow us. Beauty, Beauty on the Bayou. Thank you. So Yay. Much. If I have to go by her house <laughs> to rehearse, we're gonna pull it together one way or the other.